Would you recommend setting up two-factor authentication as an additional security method? Yes, Rob. Yes, I would. In fact, I'm going to do you one better and let's take a look at my top five essential tips for securing your home assistant. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Tutorial Tuesday, the series where you guys ask questions and I do my best to answer them as quickly and efficiently as possible. And today that question comes from Rob from the remote access video. And although I'm not answering that question directly because that would be a very, sh a very short video, I thought we could pivot and turn this video into a top five essential tips for securing your home assistant. Because what can I say, I'm a nice guy and you guys also seem to enjoy the security aspect from the remote access video. Most of these tips are aimed more specifically at if you have your home assistant available externally. And by no means is this an exhaustive list, but more of a big basic or a beginner level list that is gonna get you the most bang for your buck. There are a lot more that we could cover that are a bit more advanced but they probably require their own dedicated video to do sort of a more deep dive on those. But as long as you're doing the basic ones from this video, you should be in a much better place. Very quickly, before we get into the first tip, if you like this video and you want to see more just like it, make sure to hit that like button and get subscribed if you aren't already, and I will very much appreciate it. And if you want your question to be answered in the next video, make sure to drop it in the comments down below, and you never know, I might just answer it. Okay, so tip number one is to make sure you are using HTTPS. I'm not gonna spend too long on this one because I'm sure if you have remote access enabled, you already have HTTPS enabled, or at least you should. But essentially, HTTPS is gonna make sure that all of your traffic between yourself and the server is encrypted using SSL or TLS. This means that all of your traffic to and from your home assistant server is being encrypted and that no sensitive information can be intercepted and leaked. It also means to enable HTTPS HTTPS on any other services that you're using. For example, if your home assistant um, server speaks to an external API, make sure that it uses HTTPS. Tip number two is to make sure you are using strong passwords and also different passwords. It seems like such an obvious thing to do, but I can almost guarantee that tons of you are not doing this already, and it's a really important step to take. It's also a really low hanging fruit, right? So it's something that is so easy to do and so easy to achieve, yet a lot of people don't do it for some reason. I mean, how often do you actually log into Home Assistant? You only really do it once when you set up the app or log in on the desktop, and then after that, the password is saved if you you want it to be. So it's not like you're having to constantly enter the password over and over. And so I definitely suggest using a strong password here. Make sure to use a password man manager such as LastPass. This can help you generate um, unique long passwords for all of your applications. And when I say use a different password, I mean make sure to generate different passwords for all of your integration. Don't just use the same password for every single integration and then leave it at that. Make sure to use different passwords for all of your integrations to keep everything separate. One of my jobs is to actually audit passwords in the enterprise. So essentially I go around and crack or brute force people's passwords and you would not believe the passwords that I find people using. Even after being being repeatedly told not to use certain passwords or passphrases, you still find them using it. So make sure you are using a strong and also a different password. Tip number three is to use two-factor authentication as was asked in the initial question. And yes, I do realize the irony of how long it took me to get here. But two-factor authentication is a really good one and it's important to have enabled. And again, it's a low-hanging fruit and is so easy to do. So why not enable it? Head into your user profile in Home Assistant, scroll down to the multi-factor authentication and click enable. This is gonna pop up with a QR code. Then go to your app store or play store on your phone and download the Google Authenticator app on your phone. Click the plus button to add a new code and then scan the QR code, which is gonna generate a six digit code. Now, every time you log in, it's gonna pop up and ask you for that six digit code, which changes every 30 seconds. And all you need to do is enter that six digit code and you are golden. Once again, it's not like you're having to log into Home Assistant repeatedly. And so it's definitely an easy one to have on. So that is tip number three. Tip number four is to enable the IP ban feature within Home Assistant. And I talked about this in the remote access video. And once again, it's a really easy one to do. What the IP ban feature does is that anytime um, a user attempts to log in multiple times, if they keep getting the password wrong, it will actually block and blacklist that IP address. So it's really handy for multiple failed authentication attempts and also for stopping brute force attacks. Head to your configuration and then under the HTTP section, add the IP 
key ban enabled and login attempts threshold options to your configuration. Then check your config and restart your Home Assistant and the IP ban feature is now enabled. Now, anytime that a login is attempted and failed up to five times or whatever your threshold is, Home Assistant will automatically blacklist that IP address and stop it from being able to log in. I like to set the threshold to five, which just gives me a little bit of leeway in case I get the password wrong a couple of times, but you can set it to whatever you feel is appropriate. So that is tip number four, enable the IP ban feature. Tip number five is to use the secrets file, but not for the reason that most people think. It seems to be a common misconception that the secrets file is encrypted, however it isn't. Anyone who can access your configuration file can also access your secrets file. However, the reason it's a good one to have on is because the nature of the Home Assistant project, we all like to share and we all like to collaborate. And so this can help you avoid a situation where you share your configuration file on GitHub or some other means and you don't accidentally um, leak all of your sensitive information. Using secrets is very easy and it's also enabled out of the box so it makes sense to do so. Simply open your secrets file and add a new line with a variable name which can be anything you want and enter your password. Then head back to your configuration and replace the password you want with an exclamation secret and then the variable name that you chose. This tells Home Assistant to get the password for that variable from the secrets file. Check your configuration and then restart and that's pretty much it. So that is tip number five, use the secrets file. Let's do a bonus tip, which is tip number six, and that is to segregate your network using VLANs. This is a bit more of an intermediate one and it's definitely a topic we could do a whole video on, but the idea of segregating your network using VLANs is that it allows you more granular control of which devices can talk to other areas of your network and also which devices can talk to the internet. You'll often hear of people wanting to block Chinese devices from speaking back to Chinese servers servers because they think they're spying on them and it's not that I think they're spying on me although they could be you never know but it's more the principle of that I want to have control over which devices can talk to the internet and which can't and in theory none of your in IoT devices should need to speak to the internet unless they are cloud connected. So the advantage of VLANs is that I can block entire subnets from accessing different areas of my network or accessing the internet as I see fit. The other advantage is that it greatly helps to organize your network. With IoT devices, you'll suddenly find like hundreds of devices all connected to your Wi-Fi and you forget which one is which, what does what. Um, and using VLANs really helps to organize these in a way that makes sense so that you can find them and identify them with ease. And so that is my top five essential tips with a bonus tip for securing your Home Assistant. And a few of these aren't related specifically to Home Assistant, but they are things that you can apply to general day-to-day -day security as well as other areas of your smart home. But I hope you can take some of these and apply them to your smart home instance and hopefully step up your security game. I'm curious though, do you have any other suggestions for ones that you would add to these that I didn't cover here let me know in the comments down below share them with the community and hopefully we can all benefit but that's about all the time we have for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a few things if you did make sure to give it a like and get subscribed if you aren't already thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video Whew.